Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the third and final game of the first round of the Six Nations 2023. Italy versus the current reigning Six Nations Grand Slam champions of France. We are over this year in the Stadio Olimpico. It's a lovely day. The sunshine beating down. Not a lot of wind, not a lot of rain. So it should hopefully be some good possession today. We shouldn't see a lot of issues in terms of handling as long as the teams are performing as intended. Beautiful skyline in the background there. Both yellow and orange. Let's see how they get on. As Paolo Garbisi will be wanting to keep the momentum that Italy had at the end of the last Six Nations to keep going. As we saw that win over Wales. Such a positive move for them last year. Let's see how they get on as Yuani takes it to the line to start off with. I'm going to see the Italian line spread a little bit wider here. Because we know how solid the defence of the French has been under Sean Edwards now. They've shown it off last year. The current Six Nations champion. You can't really afford to let that defense shut you down. Get those turnover penalties. Give them easy meters. As we see, France already away through Gael Ficou. Spreads down the wing. Italy desperately trying to reorganize. Let's see. It's a huge hit in the midfield. They'll be very happy with how the defense is holding it for the minute. France obviously wanting to play quickly. We saw how fast the ruck recycling has been for France during uh, the last six nations. We saw how fast the speeds have been. We saw people like Dupont and people like this man, Damien Pinot, going down the wing. How instrumental was he last year in the six nations? Let's see how he'll get on today against Italy. They managed to hold out and get a lovely turnover as we see the ball drop back to Brex. He goes for a kick over the top, trying to find that space in the backfield. Villiers does manage to get there. A nice little charge down, though. They'll be happy with that. Paolo Garbisi can't manage to get the breakaway. Antoine Dupont, though, desperately trying to rush in. Thought he saw a gap. Got hands in the ruck. The jackal going wrong. Potentially uh, going off feet there. An easy penalty. Italy are going to take an easy three. This is probably the sensible option. I'm not sure how many tries they'll be looking to concede. Let's see how he goes on. Oh, unfortunately a bit wide, as I was saying. I'm not sure how many tries they will be conceding today. Most likely, you can imagine a team like France will certainly be looking to score a couple of tries, if not aiming for that bonus point. So going for the three points at every opportunity could be a sensible way to try and keep Italy in this game. But we know some of the good attackers they have in that backfield to make the most of it. They spread wide as Canone comes in with a brilliant interception. And suddenly there's room for someone like Montiuani, who, of course, a solid performer on the wing manages to break one tackle and it puts Italy in a superb position they're gonna go through the forwards oh there's an enormous hit that could be a massive turning point in this game Julian Marchand comes in with a massive high tackle taking the Italian player off his feet it is a yellow card it's suddenly opening up and Italy are going for blood they're going for that five meter kick to the corner there is every opportunity here. France on the yellow card, down a forward. The potential for a driving mall has suddenly opened itself up. Let's see if they can get away. All oh, France fall for the dummy. As we see, of course, Italy go for that driving mall. They're going to want to shove on. France are holding out well, even with the man down. But it's going to look like it's creaking. And Negri goes over for the first try of the game. I didn't know if I expected to see Italy coming away with the first try of this game. But a superb driving ball from them. France held out very well. But just missing that extra forward obviously just allowed it to creak open a little bit. And we know Italy are going to make the most of any opportunity given a lovely opening try. As Garbisi will see if he can turn the five into seven. Let's see how he gets on. Not a lot of wind today. Uh, you can see the flags blowing in the background. That is mainly down to all the supporters in the stadium today. Blowing those flags around with their own hands as opposed to the wind. Not a lot of wind. So an easy kick converts it into seven. Fischetti gets himself under the ball. Absolutely lovely, but turned over by France. They know they need to get back into this game. There is the potential for this game to slip away from them. They won't want to see it. We saw Italy last year have great wins over the likes of Wales and also Australia. We know what Italy are capable of as we see a knock-on go into touch. From Damien Pinot, great cover tackle there by Brex, getting across for that one. We know how solid he is defensively. Italy with their first scrum. For some reason, Julian Marchand is, is sat on the pitch 
Even though he shouldn't be, there's definitely a cut going on here. Oh, and there's an illegal put in as well. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. The referee surely needs to stop the game to uh, have a look at why on earth Julian Marchand has, uh, for some reason, stood on the field. Probably needs to sort this out. So seven players He's uh, still on the field. I'm sure the players are just going to play around him. Uh, Fabian Gautier needs to uh, get involved with this one because this man is uh, clearly doing something rather illegal there. France decide to play on as is and find a nice little gap in that defensive line of Italy. They rush to the aid. There's a lot of room out on this wing as we see Varney try and get across. Paolo Garbisi with a huge tackle to potentially save a score there in the corner. Italy are in defensive mode as they get on. Let's see how they can score. Oh, it's a good turnover. I think that was Federico Ruzza. Absolutely brilliant last year. Another hands in the ruck penalty going against France. They're just too eager in this game. Obviously, Italy are holding this one together just enough to keep it going. And it's an easy exit. And I don't think France will be happy with that. The last thing they want to be doing is giving easy penalties away. Allowing Italy to get out of their own 22 when it just simply doesn't need to be done. So we're about to have a throw. Okay, let's see how Italy get on in this lineup. They go long. France are going to jump for it as well. We'll see who can secure it. They do. Steven Varney to guard BC with a silly offload. Probably didn't need to happen. Italy looking short man now on this right wing. As France try and break through the line, they don't manage it. Italy competing, though, managing to get it back. Brex thinks he sees some room in that backfield and does. The bounce, unfortunately, not going his way. And France will manage to secure that one down. Italy slowing down a little bit here just to keep themselves a little bit more organised. Some lovely tackles in the midfield by Italy. The defence, they should be very happy today with how they performed so far. Only really had one major flaw in their defensive line. France... Now, with the opportunity, they do have a man overlap, but it is shut down very well by the flanker there. They're still trying to go down this left wing. Villiers, with a nice little breakaway, drops the ball again. The handling from both teams today been a little bit, a little bit shaky. They'll want to be improving this as they go on through the Six Nations. They go for a fast one down at the front. They manage to collect Steven Varney. Can he get it out? Federico Mori takes it in. Let's see how Italy want to take this one. They'll just it's go through the forwards, I imagine, for down. the second. They'll know they're making the most There's of this game tackle. so far. They've Here's kept the France created. under pressure. Can Italy seal out this first half? I think they'll be very happy to go in with a 7-0 lead as it stands. A huge hit in that midfield again. Tried it, but it just didn't come off. Oh, there was an interception run there. Absolutely fantastic line from the Italian player. Just not managing to get on that ball. They'll be happy with it. Oh, he gets taken down. Can Italy recover? No, they can't. Their line is all over the place. Looking very dogged at the minute as Damien Pinot gets away again. Manages to dodge two tacklers. That's some good ground made. Italy will get there. Oh, they'll take it off the park. They'll be very happy with that opening first half. 7-0. Could have been 10 had the penalty gone their way. Let's check out the highlights from that first half. Italy will be extremely happy with that first half going and it's 7-0. There have been some shaky points. There's been a couple of handling errors from both teams so far in this game, but for the majority, the Italian defense has held very well. We did see a couple of breaks though from France when they managed to get that man overlap. They've made the most of them, starting off with Ficou very early on in the first half and then one towards the end of that second half. But one of the big turning points of this game, the yellow card coming in from Julian Marchand allowed the early try for Italy in this game that driving wall we see so well from Italy saw them get over converted as well taking them to that seven points only for Julian Marchand to for whatever reason decide he could run back on the field mid scrum surely needs to be reprimanded after this game I'm sure they'll look into this by the officials later on France looked like they potentially could have had a scoring opportunity later on into the end of that first half but Italy managed to held out their defense well enough and they got that ball kicked off the park it's a good first half for them they'll be really happy with how they got on On to the second half then, and there have been some changes in the Italy pack. It's a terrible first kickoff by France. They won't be very happy with that just to give possession straight back 
to Italy, but there has been a change at scrum half. Callum Braley has come on in that scrum half, along with an entirely new front row for Italy. They'll be looking extremely positive, potentially, at the start of this first half. Both teams, have, of course, been able to sit down, regain a bit of that stamina, but a brand new front row early on. We'll see how they get on. And it's another poor put-in. I think that's the second one we've seen today from Italy. They need to work on those put-ins, as one team is handing the penalties over, as do the other team. Oh, I feel like the Italian player could have kept that one in if they'd potentially gone for it. But they've gone for the quick throw. As you won, he's caught them off guard. And now he could potentially recover his own kick. Doesn't manage it. The ball bounces just a little bit too far. The ball is dropped, but the referee seems to have missed a potential knock on there. Will the TMOs intervene? We'll have to wait and see. Italy playing well as Bigi comes on. Zanon out to Federico Mori. Manages to get the ball around. Good stop, though, from Villiers. Could see that coming. Knew he thought the grubber kick was going to be lethal in that position. Padovani in that deep position got shut down though. The French attackers absolutely exploding onto the field. Let's see how they get out here. Casarelli gets taken to ground. Italy going for the speed in terms of recycling at the minute. Very, very nice to see from them. The replacement front row obviously playing a vital role in that. Zanon again, great distribution. Out to Iwani. Oh, managed to make good meters down the left wing but does get tackled into touch. France will need to get back into this game if they can. Let's see what happens at the lineout. It is stolen by Canone. Callum Braley to Garbisi. Big up and under. Going to be chasing this down all the way. Everyone's missed it. Oh, there was nearly the opportunity there for him to get a superb try. Padovani turns it around. What's he thinking? He's going for the 50-22. He's seen gap in that backfield. The bounce doesn't go in his favour as Damien Pino manages to kick back away. Has found the grass. Italy have been caught napping there in that midfield. Padovani on the counter run, though, just decides to run straight through the middle. Body on the line stuff. Nice to see. Let's see if that ball can get out wide. Yuani in trouble, though, out on the wing. Italy will need to sort this out a little bit. Garbisi's drop back in the pocket. I can imagine we'll be seeing a nice clearing kick as we do. Sees it fall further down the field. France run it back up. That gap in the backfield again opening up for them. Italy just want to be careful with how narrow they're playing. They're finding the room in that backfield. There's a potential overlap here in terms of the players though. Can Luca Bigi get it out? And does to Yuani who's going to kick it on downfield. It's going to be a pure foot race between the winger and the fullback. I think France will get back in time for this one, though. He tries to run it out. Not going to get there, but we will have a 22 dropout. We're now in the 62nd minute. And Lovely it's from him. Traore takes it to the line. Brex. Oh, gets shoved back by Gregory Aldrich there. Superb tackle. Putting them on the back foot. Oh, a nice missed pass playing it over the top. He's made the extra man. There's the potential here for Yuani to do something on the wing. He does some magic. He's showing off. Can he get to the line? He doesn't quite get there. It was incredibly close. There could have been the option there to have got yet another try. As we'll see, Italy set up here. Bit of a plan move as Zanon taking it to the line as well. French defense, brilliant. And turning the ball over. Oh, it's a terrible mistake. No one would see that one coming. The French defense has been so good being able to hold out on their own line. They got the turnover. But what happened there? Gregory Aldrich filling in at scrum half. Tried to get the pass away through the ball into the post. And Traore comes on. Obviously, some changes are needed. Dupont's obviously picked up an injury. That's why he was not back in that scrum half position, which is why Gregory Aldrich filled in and made that terrible mistake. Lovely little kick from him. So, Maxime Lucou will come on in place of Dupont. Terrible shame for him. We'll hopefully be seeing him back for the next game. But Gregory Aldrich got big amends to make in this one. Wow, the wind. Bouncing the ball all over the place. The wind is picking up in the second half. France get the turnover that they will want there. Let's see if Italy can hold this together. You can see the Italians are flying high at the minute. Oh, they've got the crowd behind them. Another massive tackle. The French ruck recycling just doing enough, though. They look like they're running out of options a little bit here. They're slowing down on that ruck, though. Not really sure who's the best man to pass to every single time. Here, Luku goes himself. Trying to make a big impact from the game. There's the potential there for that to have been a, a better option, potentially, than going for the kick. But they also get the turnover. Italy have found themselves in terrible issues at the minute, trying to deal with this as Villiers still going. Absolutely brilliant run by him. Ficou takes it in. 
France are desperately trying to get to this line. Who's going to defend for Italy? Oh, has he made it? It is Cyril Bai takes it over France. Desperately trying to clutch something out from this game here. What a brilliant set of run. All started from Villiers. Lovely handoff there. Sit down, boy. As he tries to get it back inside. Lovely offloads from Gael Ficou. Out the back. Lovely. Taken on by Julian Marchand. Making up for his earlier yellow card. We saw some lovely sidestepping there from Cyril Bai. Takes it over the try line. Entomac to pull them back within seven. They'll be wanting this game to stay on if they can do. They need to try and pull something from this game. A losing bonus point is good, but they'll be wanting to take a bit more. Let's see how Italy hold out. Three minutes left on the clock. Big game here. Let's see how they can hold on. The ball bouncing awkwardly again as Luca Bigi comes in to take the ball. They spread it out wide. Canone takes it down. What are they thinking here? They can't manage to get the players in. Luku has kicked it away. That's an enormous decision. I don't know if that was right, but Italy have decided to play on as they've seen room down the outside as Zanon gets it out to Ruzza. Down to Iwani. It's a high ball. It's anyone's ball. Three teams going for it. Iwani recovers. Oh, but he's dropped the ball. Could have potentially been something wonderful there. Luku kicks it away again. I don't think that was the right move, and neither does Padovani. We'll kick it out. They'll be happy to take the win over France. Not a lot of people saw that one coming this year, but that early yellow card obviously making a massive impact to the momentum of this game. Italy will be extremely happy with that result, beating the Six Nations and Grand Slam champions as it stands. France will need to make a big recovery going on into the second week of the Six Nations. I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.